Yeah, no, no podcast last week because we were busy. Uh, yeah, we, have a fly uh, in here. we were busy doing some. What? We have a fly in here. Cool. This is a Walty White moment. <laughs> what is that? Is that a little centipede? Like a silverfish? He's our new guest. Guys, welcome our new guest to the podcast. Silverfish. Yeah! Yay! Trying to make a Minecraft songs. <laughs> what? The Minecraft silverfish. I didn't know there were silverfish in Minecraft. Dude, silverfish are like the worst thing in Minecraft. They come out of stones sometimes when you break Why it. Why are they the worst thing? Because they're just tiny and annoying. Their hitbox is really small. Do they do anything? They attack you. They hurt you. Oh, do they hurt you? Yeah. Oh. They got like half a heart. Looks kind of like a centipede. Them. It's not silver. I feel like silverfish are made from like all the dust that you find in your closet. It all <laughs> I don't forms think that's into true. one. Yeah. It's a silverfish. Because they always end up, they're always like under your bed next to like dust or like in your closet, in the back yeah. of your closet, like dusty. Areas. I would always find them in my granny's bathroom coming out of like the shower. Ew. Yeah. Gross. Like Coraline. The theater's this week. It is? They're bringing it back. The deleted scenes one? Yeah, although that's line. annoying that it was, like, not integrated back in the movie. It was just, like, played after the fact. Yeah, why wouldn't they just have that? I guess... Then you could sell a DVD of the, like, com the, the director's cut, you know? Anyway, welcome, guys. Welcome to Meeting Halfway with me, Mark, and this Veronica. <laughs> this. Uh, and yeah, we were busy last week, so we were doing something with um with uh, Billy Billiam and Savannah, who were in town, oh. and uh, we were showing them around and, and doing a project with them. And now we're we're back here for the for the podcast. It's been so long since it's we been, recorded one. It's what, been like weeks? three weeks. But uh, they were here for a week, mm -hmm. and uh, and now they're gone. Now it's back to us until October, when probably Sunny, Sunny is going to be here. Where, where Sunny's going to be standing back here. Sunny. Yeah. Also, that's why the uh, that's why the set here is kind of fucked up. Billy and Savannah were sleeping in this room. We like moved the couch, put like air mattresses in here. Um, I don't know. I guess one of them like headbutt the fucking cupboard or something and it knocked over the the death egg robot and i did broke that him. you did that on accident really yeah when i was packing things up i went to it like the next day and it was even more broken than when i like i first saw it broken maybe they picked up the pieces and put them up maybe away. they tried to put them back together yeah. and then fucked it up that was oh, me though that wasn't them oh yeah okay we're forgetting something guys <laughs> one second He's so menacing. <laughs> Putting him in front of the screen, just moving. Where were we? We were. Oh, we were at a bunch of and. Sons. No, we were at and and and. It was not Frank and Sons. Frank was on the five dollar shelf, and the lady was telling the the people about her uh, dead nephew. Uh, where? Who? Okay. Dead nephew? Remember we were at Frank and Sons, and I saw that, and I went to pay for it, and then I came over to you afterwards, and I You're was, right. I didn't even need to start the story, and she already had I remember. <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> we don't need to include any of this. This is not interesting. No, leave it. Who cares? Uh, like, there's the little Stewie Griffin night. Veronica might be covering... You are not uh, putting Stewie on top of Tito. Is he not covered there? No, I guess he wouldn't be covered. Poor Tito. He's the, the exact same brand as the old Brian Griffin bobblehead I have. So that's a pretty little cool. fun fact He looks awful, though. The Brian? No, Stewie. The Stewie one? Yeah, he looks pretty he bad. He looks really bad. Here, well, here's a high-quality here's here's photo. High-definition AI upscaled. I'll just go into uh, ChatGPT and ask it to Upscale make it. No, just to ask it to make a Stewie Griffin bobblehead, and we'll put that on screen right here. <laughs> Wait, you can't use AI. That's stolen <laughs> art. That's the, What's the big AI thing right now? What was the big scandal recently? Oh, no, it was the Scooby-Doo. It was Scooby a Scooby Doo, Doo That's what I was to think Five Nights at Freddy's animation, and they used the AI version of Daphne. And so it was a well, great it was like, Delisle. It was a couple of them. Yeah, it was like a Five Nights at Freddy's Scooby Doo crossover stop motion. It's really well done. It's very, it's like Rankin Bass themed. And apparently, like the creator of it was really young, and it was like their first thing they had ever really posted online of this scale. And um, everyone for the first like two hours of it being up were like, "This is really awesome," and then everything went to shit. That's because they used AI voice for Daphne and Fred and pretty much everyone. Except they did the voice for Shaggy Except and Scooby. Scooby and Shaggy, yeah. yeah. And Grey Delisle, I think it was Grey Delisle, who does the voice of Daphne. Yeah. More modern Scooby-Doo's got really upset at this person's uh, as kid. Saying they were ripping off her voice. Yeah. A situation happened where a filmmaker made a Scooby 
transmission. And, um, and I got really angry about it. I mean, I don't really have to just a little tight it. And so she <laughs> got really, really mad on Twitter about it. And everybody was shitting on this kid. <laughs> saying he should <laughs> Greg Delisle literally said he should be blacklisted from the industry yeah the, like trying to ruin this kid's career before he even took off dude like yeah you know yeah not that not that Greg Delisle actually could blacklist someone like that's just like I'm gonna warn you to my friends you know that's that's but but the way everyone was going about it maybe it wasn't even her specifically but I know a lot of people were being like this kid should be blacklisted he should not have like a, a career anywhere in in the business and um it's like it's I, I'm I was really happy that people on their own accord were able to look at that and go like that that's crazy you know like this kid should just be like taught hey in the future this is really good but in the future you know you should use um like Twitter for, to look for uh, voice actors who'd be willing to do it for free okay like yeah obviously like AI is bad but this kid has limited resources and what he's doing he's doing by himself like you know what I mean and he did it for himself like, yeah did, you yeah. know so. I just don't understand why you would get so like hold that principle or that standard to something so amateur in like small scale. Yeah, and I feel like when you do that, you push the person more towards AI. They'll be like, well, f well, fuck, I guess why if I'm blacklisted, I'll just keep using AI voices. Like I can't get a voice actor, yeah. or I'll just make them like have a stigma around like the voice acting community. I feel like that's almost worse. Because let's way. be honest, if this movie had really bad voice acting for Fred and Daphne and everything, it would completely lower the quality of what ev how it all looks and how it all feels. You like, know how we know that? Because Veronica and I were watching it like Shaggy and Scooby are really off. Yes. <laughs> it yes. was distracting. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You know, and we like instantly we knew like, oh, okay, they used AI for the voice. Yeah. Voices. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. It's very obvious. You but can just I, tell. It's but. like it's this th it's this free thing and he's not like really making anything off it as far as I'm aware. Like, who cares? I was like, going to say, the kid was just having fun and being creative. Like, well, I don't see the issue with that. Okay? I just don't. I know, like, yeah, AI is bad. You shouldn't be using people's voices without their permission for anything, especially if you're going to monetize off of it. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, that's bad. But at the same time, like... If someone does it w without the intent of, like, being, like, all malicious, you know? If they genuinely just are like, oh, this is a cool tool. Yeah. Just educate them. Just just tell them, like, and that's what 90% of people did, you know? Like, this, it wasn't, like, an overwhelming amount you of people know, being like, it, fuck you. You know what this kind of reminds me of? And it's not, like, the same, but it's kind of like when people would trace animations. Like, they'd rotoscope animations that have already been made and make their own little, like, story. You know what I mean? Like, in their own little animations, like, they'll yeah. take a scene from, like... I don't know, Disney, some Disney movie, and they'll trace over it. It's the same, like, dance movement as a Disney movie. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, that's kind of like art theft. Yeah. Right? You're tracing, right? Of course. And that never... That had an issue, a bigger issue back then, like in early, like, Flash days, when people would be making their own cartoons and how critical people would be yeah, but of no, each I other's work. Really, you know? And it's kind of just... Yeah, now it's just the norm. Now it's creative. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like being, being for, for a while, being a tracer on the internet was the worst thing you could That's ever be. That's what I'm saying. But now... <laughs> guys, you... on the internet, no matter how long you're on the internet, you can never be a tracer or, or say something hypocritical. Never. Yeah, because God forbid that you're a changing and developing person. God, mm -hmm. for, God forbid that you improve. You know, <laughs> no redemption. <laughs> It just reminds me of the same the same consequences, like how much people would hold that against others previously, and now people hold using AI voices for, against others. Yeah. yeah, I feel like if it's for a creative project on your own, who cares? Yeah, if yeah. you had if you made a little animation where all of a sudden Morty, Mordecai from regular show walks in like singing Dude. Golden Hour. Yeah, exactly. For five seconds as a gag, like would you crucify them? Yeah, yeah, it, it's it, such a touchy subject. It's it's, it's so like if it's because we're like in the infancy of it that people are kind of like seeing what's riding the line too much. Like where yeah. does where does it go from like a fine and acceptable use of AI to an unacceptable use of AI? I suppose the idea of someone's likeness being stolen and used against their will that that there should be no tolerance for that. Yeah, yeah, which I understand. I get and I agree with. But I feel like if someone does do it, even if, like, accidentally, you know, someone just does it because they don't think about it, it's not worth, like, getting that mad at them over. It's just a case of being like, hey, don't do that again. I don't approve okay, of it. Okay, let me, let me ask and you. And if they're a good person, they'll be like, sure, won't do um, My apologies. Let me ask Like you the th kid did. Oh, did he? He was very, like, apologetic. Yeah. What would you do if someone made an AI Ellis Mark video ranking every Ellis Mark video?
If someone did that, I think I'd appreciate it as a joke. But that's because there's much less stakes in, in me being replaceable compared to a voice actor. I feel like I would mostly just get self-conscious of how the AI would like pick up on my writing like quirks and, and then write it the same and I'm like, fuck, I do say that too much, you know? <laughs> like it knows, the, the bot Chat knows. Chat GPT knows. Yeah, it's like a thing of, oh, would you be mad if someone just started making like, oh, do AI art of this thing in Veronica's art style? Would you be pissed? I would, I would be a little jealous if the AI was able to articulate how I wanted to execute certain, certain things, things better. Yeah, I'd be I'd be pretty upset, but then I would learn. Yeah, you would learn what it's. I guess I you. would I would see how it, it's done. I would see how it, obviously like what it looks like, um, and I would try to replicate that. You know, to improve myself. Hold on, raise your magic wand. Whoa! There we go. Look at that, guys. That just flicked on. When AI art was first like popping off, when remember that first program we would sit on and use where it would show you like nine different images? Oh yeah, that was Dolly. Was Dolly. Dolly. When whenever that it was came Dolly out, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. When that came out, everyone was using it. It'd be like, ah, draw this cool little picture of me and all these cool little art styles, and then they posted to Twitter going like, God, I'm so gorgeous, and it's like, yeah, but but then it felt like. Over the course of like a day, you know, it was yeah. like, that's not cool. Like, can't do that. Yeah, but, immediately. Every, but everyone was fucking doing what it. What was it? It was, Some it was an app. app. Yeah. Remini. And like, you can use, like, you can upload your own photos on there and have it AI upscale and make it look better. And or, make it look like, or it's like, uh, done with pimp brushes yes. or like cool little. Or a lot of people on, on like TikTok are doing the thing where they're using Remini to make their, their LinkedIn profile pics. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the big the big, the big funny thing. meme yeah and i think for memes and stuff it's fine personally i don't care it's all about the intent it's whether or not you're intending on ripping someone off and if you are are you doing it for monetary gain for clout like what's what's the reason are you doing it like just because you're sitting around for fun like just okay typing but stuff ethically up, like... but ethically if you say the kid the scooby-doo kid say he okay. made that and then he got offered monetization okay and then monetized on it from that point on is that bad or is that fine? Morally, it's weird because it's not like people are going there for the AI voices. Yeah, you know? they're going there for the look of it. And I don't. Yeah, I don't style. think. I don't think morally it would be wrong. It would just be like, don't do that again in the future. Or if you were getting paid off this now, hire voice actors in the yeah, future. Yeah, now you can hire the voice actors if you can get money for instead it. of hire a subscription to an AI art like service. You know. Yeah. But you know, it was I, I was so weird seeing like the shift in AI art completely. Like it, for for like a couple of days, it was oh my god, AI's gotten to this point. It's so like impressive. And then over the course of a day, it was like wait, no, this this isn't impressive. This is terrifying. This is horrible. They're they're stealing. They're stealing art from yeah. us. I know that I know a handful of artists though who were like this was taken from me. Yeah. Who like pointed it out, like pointed out like the AI art and then like their art. It's like this was ripped off from me, and it's like oh that's really fucked up. It is fucked up. Deviant art, Deviant art had a really big th thing scandal because they, because they said, had AI art where it. They said AI was allowed to like pick up on yes, stuff uploaded to their to uploaded their site. to their site. So I think Adobe did something like Adobe that. Adobe still has that. You can still do that with Adobe. Uh, um, there's another one. Uh, Paint Tool Side? No. No. What's the no. What's that other one people like using? Clip Studio. Clip Studio Paint. I think they either did AI or they made like a statement being like, we will never do AI. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I remember I that. I forget which. Um, yeah. Maybe they said they were doing AI, then they got shit on and then said they wouldn't. Uh, it's pretty crazy, though, because like in like f not even two more years, it's going to be way more advanced. It's going to be pretty seamless two years from now. Think about two years ago. Where we were with AI, <laughs> we and now we get like, yeah. now we get Mordecai from regular show singing Golden Hour. Yeah, it's pretty pretty wild. Kind of awesome. Put um, a, put a little Mordecai right here singing Golden Hour. Is that gonna be the new thing, Mordecai singing <laughs> Golden Hour? Um, yeah, you know what's even crazier though? Hmm. The Pride family. Oh yeah. <laughs> like two weeks ago, oh, yeah. <laughs> Veronica and I were where were we? I was getting my hair done. That's what it was. Yeah, we were driving back. Guys, I got my hair cut. Look, Mark got his hair done. Better or worse? Let me know in the comments below. It's styled now. We were driving back. We were driving back from the salon, and Mark was like, haha, everybody's getting mad at the Proud family right now. Yeah, and I, I personally have never really watched the Proud family, like any of them. Um, I don't I like care the about Proud the family. reboot. Yeah, you like it. I don't like the reboot. 
Um, well, I don't care about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't care about either, really. Um, but a clip was shared of, like, the new season, season two of the Pride Family reboot. And it was a clip where Penny's, like, locked walks, out of her walks house. home and goes, do, 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 do. <gasps> uh, <laughs> and she's locked. And um, she, her mom's like, oh, you came home late, so you're on the streets now. And her dad, like, gives her bus fare and is like, I Go can't let, I can't let you back house. in. Yeah. Um, and that's all they show. That's, that's, that's literally it. it. That's it. And the, the tagline was something like, oh, don't cross Penny's mother. Yeah, don't cross Trudy. And then Trudy Proud. everyone, like 10,000, thousands and thousands of quote tweets saying this is child abuse. Dude, They're people, glorifying child abuse on Disney Channel. People were freaking the fuck out being like, why are you doing this, Disney? This is abusive, right? And so <laughs> uh, my thought my thought to this is like, first off, like this is a fucking cartoon. Like you guys yeah. are really getting upset about the Proud family. Like, come on. Second off, like, what about people who have had that happen to them? Yeah, my thought was always like, why would, why couldn't they relate? Why can't yeah, you allow it, someone to relate to this? It, it really all comes down to how it's executed, and you can't yeah. tell from that like one, one minute, minute clip. And from what I hear, the episode executes it in a pretty shit way. Yeah, it's just her staying at her grandmother's house, and, and it's, it's like really shitty. Her there. grandmother's like all neurotic and whatever, like um, gets in her nerves, and then she has to like come home and like beg for forgiveness she has to, or like, do something. all the chores yeah she has to clean everything whatever you know house. i don't know I, I i feel like people getting mad at that on its own is such like why can't a cartoon show something like that is it really that like i don't know what the word is it, it's so hard to describe but it's like a cartoon should be able to show something that like is triggering is that <laughs> is that the word like, yeah, a cartoon should be able to show that could be how life is shitty. Yeah, you know, I or things that like can be traumatic. Kids' or, cartoons are at their best when the kid can relate to what they're seeing, and it like you know. Yeah, so um, which brings it back to like, why wouldn't you want a car- like someone to relate to this? Yeah, I, it, I, I we were talking know? about it on the way home. I got locked out of the house as a kid once. You know, I, I was very like, what the f-? like, I was screaming. You know, it was terrifying. Um, I was like five, six, seven, but I, I don't look at that, and I'm like, oh my god, this brings me back you know it's like <laughs> can we really not show anything yes can we really not show any kind of who struggle cares? for a kid who cares and also it's just like okay she got locked out of her house for a night it's like sure that's neglectful right that's sure considered kids, abuse. Ki- bad things have yeah. happened with kids who have been locked out of their house before but that doesn't mean the pride family in their scenario can't show that yes. and not have penny get brutally murdered you know <laughs> Like they don't exactly just because that happened to kids who have had that happen doesn't mean there aren't like thousands and thousands of cases where a kid is like left outside and they're not murdered. Yeah. So why shouldn't the pride family be able to? Why like, can't they show the depiction of the kid of not that. getting murdered? Yeah. yeah. Of like why just them that ha- being outside, and why having to deal with being outside. A scenario like this has to be the worst case scenario. Yeah, just to acknowledge know? it. Yeah. Yes, I just don't understand because because there is a worst case scenario. Therefore, that yeah, it needs to be acknowledged. But like. What about what about just regular storytelling, you know? Yeah. You know, and something where where somebody just can char- relate to. Just a character the has to like uh, go through some kind of struggle. Yes, you know? and someone can relate to it. And like, you can look the- at it and go like, "That's really mean," or "That's really awful on her." And it's like, yeah. And it's like that, yes. should be, that should be the point of the episode. Yeah, that's pretty that shitty. Is. But from what I hear, the Pride family doesn't do that. They don't really yeah, like. Yeah, they don't redeem it. But that would be a better episode if like they they kind of acknowledge the harshness of it. You know, I feel yeah. like in a way. Um, cause it is harsh. It's very harsh. So, but I feel like people comment on it. But it's also on, a cartoon. It's nonsense. A nonsense in the sense of it's nonsense to get upset about this. It's not, it's not happening to a real kid. Yeah. Yeah. So not who not cares? the show itself. It's the circumstance. Like it's a cartoon. It's nonsense. This yeah, is nonsense. A kid is not actually being put in danger and no kid is going to look at that. And be like, I got, I got to get locked out of my house. It's not something they're going to reenact like the fucking kid who burned down his house <laughs> and killed his sister watching a Beavis and Butthead. Really? Yeah, that was a big, that was a big famous story. Really? That was why fire was. Remember the SpongeBob episode where Squidward like eats the Krabby Patties and he gets all fat and blows up? Yeah. They del- had to delete a scene in that episode where he like sneaks into the Krusty Krab at nighttime and then he got like a little bucket. Oh, on yeah, the I top. remember that. That's, no, I remember that. Yeah, that deleted scene. I remember the original, and I remember that it was deleted. Yeah, um, but they had to cut it out entirely um, because uh, of that situation, or like at least they were like fearful about something like that situation happening again. Like somebody doing that to somebody because a, a kid did. They saw it in SpongeBob. 
Yeah, they were worried about that because in the past with Beavis and Butthead, people our kid did like burn down his eyes and kill his sister. Mm-hmm. What's the context though? Why did he do that? In the episode, one of the characters just like lit a match or something oh. like that. Oh, okay. I don't know. Damn. Yeah, that's but that, that's the thing. So it's like no kid's gonna watch the Pride Family episode and being like, "Wow, being outside your house is awesome." Like, no. Like no kid, True. no kid is going to be put in danger from that happening from watching this episode, you know. And if the kid looks at that and goes like, "That's really horrible for for Penny. That's really awful." It's like, yeah, good. Of course it is. I it, we were talking about it before, and this isn't in relation to the the Pride House. Uh, what the what's called the Proud House, the Loud House. The, what is it called? The Pride Family. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better name. <laughs> they should have called it the Pride House. Uh, that does, yeah, that does work. Uh, yeah, this isn't specifically about the the Pride Family in particular, but it is that thing of like, why can a ki- why can a thing made for kids ha- like try to elicit some kind of reaction out of the kid even if negative why can't it make the kid feel have something? an emotion yeah feel an emotion it's that kind of thing where it's like yeah. it's like ipad kids you sit them in front of cocomel and you sit them in front of like fucking spider-man like elsa shit you know and it's just the kid gets nothing out of it why can't you show them something that shows, that shows raw emotion that shows emotion a really yeah. good example of it is like sesame street with mr hooper dying right yeah which we don't need to go into much we don't talk about go, this in the podcast before yeah we have it teaches a child how to feel about or how to deal with circumstances right yeah and then you get episodes in hey arnold where it's like helga going to therapy and talking about the neglect the abuse that she has faced from her parents her family neglects her and the only person who's ever shown her kindness was Arnold. And that's why she loves Arnold, you know? Deep-rooted emotions that are, like, presented towards the character as a conflict in a way. Yeah. Why can't we have that? Like, if that Helga episode came out today, it would either be, like, talking about how traumatic it is and how awful the parents are, which is, like, good. That's that's the reaction the episode yeah. wants from you. It's like, yeah, you know? Helga lives in a shithole home. Um, her parents don't care. It's just weird. It's also because the Pride family in particular... Isn't this new show like Penny's not 14? You know, 16. she's one of the two. Yeah, she's like a teenager now. Hey Arnold's demographic is even younger, I would argue, than the new reboot of The Pride Family. The Pride Family seems like it's going for an audience of like 13, 14. Yeah. Uh, 14 year old girls. Or people who really enjoyed the show. I, I think like kids wise, like around that age range of like, like tween, you know, early teens. Yeah. Kids not dumb, you know? Teenagers not dumb. No, they're not. <laughs> They're not going to, like, I don't know, look at that and be traumatized. It's not like a kid seeing, like, scary imagery or, like... Yeah, it's not a scary maze game. <laughs> or it's like as a kid when you'd watch an episode of a show, like a kid's cartoon, you get scared by something, you know? Like, you know, like, I would watch, like, Lilo and Stitch. This is a bad example. But I would watch, like, Lilo and Stitch and feel really bad for the ice cream guy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Stuff like that in cartoons that as a kid you like just really random but it makes you feel like sad. Yeah, like you the know? squids dying in Courage the Carly Dog. Yeah, I don't think that demographic of stuff is and that's able to be like deep for kids, but not even that demographic of stuff is older than what the Pride Family reboot is going for. It's going for like the demographic above that. Yeah, no, it's just it's just dumb. It's just really, really dumb. And it's one of those things where it's so hard to talk about. You, you can't talk about it because a lot of people feel very justified. It's the same feel. thing. It's the same thing as the AI thing where it's like, because this shows abuse, no, we cannot tolerate that. We can't tolerate it form. at all in any yeah. form. Even if you're like showing it in a case where you're trying to like present the present shitty situation. For so what you it can, is. Yes. Yeah. To see it for what it is. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. You're right. But you can't do that. But you can't. But you can't do that. And you, you can't, can't talk about can't it. Can't talk about and it. You can't make fun of it. And if you do, like Twitter will kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Guys, we got our first sponsor, and it's Skillshare. Skillshare is a premium online learning community with thousands of courses that can help make you an expert at whatever it is you want to learn. I've been trying to learn more professional editing techniques recently, which they thankfully have an abundance of high-quality courses for. Seen with animation, film, graphic design, it's very difficult to break into a creative field like that, so I'm glad something like Skillshare provides an affordable way for people to learn about this stuff. 
The marketing your brand or business with a video course is also great. What's even better is their amazing one month free trial offer. Or if you go to the link in the description, you can access all of this helpful content. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get that one month free trial, so be quick. Skillshare has been such a great tool for me. It's a really spectacular asset to have when I want to learn more about something but don't want to scour YouTube looking for a quality video. Again, the link in the description only works for the first 1,000 people, so check it out and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring the podcast. Wow, guys, wasn't that a great sponsor? Yeah, guys, you should Guys, this is all because of your support. Give yourself a round of applause. Like Press that. the little Five Nights at Freddy's button. So, Veronica. Yes? What are you most excited about for Halloween? <laughs> I'm excited for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, of course. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be pretty I fun. I wish the Five Nights at Freddy's movie would sponsor us. Yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's movie, if you want us at the premiere... Just saying, Just we're available. Know. Yeah. We'll always make time for you. We're currently in a big predicament, guys. We have Are to we? come up with uh, a Halloween costume. Oh, yeah. Okay. Idea. So... We are, we all wanted to do, well, not we all, me, Mark, Most and Sunny. Most of us, we had been talking, we had been talking about all doing, year about yeah, doing a Five, five Nights, Nights at Freddy's, Freddy's group costume. Group costume. But Kellen doesn't want to do it. Kellen doesn't want to mix Five Nights at Freddy's with a fun party, which I get. And my suggestion to him was, Kellen, if you can come up with a better idea for a group costume, we'll do it. We'll do it instead. And uh, so far, there's been no, not, nothing really to match the quality of a good Five Nights at Freddy's group costume. Um, so, guys guys in the comments below if you have any cool group costume ideas that you think we would think is cool then uh, then then send it below kellen had the idea of super mario which i just think is a terrible idea that wasn't kellen's idea that was that sunny's was sunny. idea sunny you can, you came up with that idea and blamed it on kellen yeah i think if there's one like most overused group costume party idea there is out there it's super mario it's lame. There's nothing cool about it. Everything you could possibly do with a Mario costume has been done. It's just a hat and overalls, you know? Who cares? I just feel like also the year of the Super Mario Brothers movie, like Everyone's Mario, gonna be Mario and Barbie and Oppenheimer and all of that and Ken, all that's going, that's, everyone's going to do that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be Montgomery Gator. Yeah, I didn't know who I was going to be. Um, Mark said crying child before. Yeah, I'll be the crying child. That's the easiest one. You should not be the crying child. You should be Bonnie. We should all be animatronics. Yeah. Except for Sunny, who should be Balloon Boy. Hello. <laughs> Sunny's going to be Freddy. I don't know. I think Sunny as Balloon Boy is kind of better. Fit with the theme of last year where nobody dresses up as the mean character. I guess, yeah, but also seeing Sunny dress up as Freddy is like something we've always talked about. <laughs> I've, I've always thought about him dressed up as Balloon Boy, though. It's too perfect. <laughs> the same body type. <laughs> round <laughs> yeah round do you ever see uh end of z world the animation no. end of z world round all right damn that is a sweet earth you might say round all right no, no, oh, ice that caps melting ruling out the ice caps melting meteors becoming crashed <sighs> into us meteors about to come yeah I, uh i saw it on ebum's world oh yeah and I, I never i was so confused by the internet as a kid i didn't know what it was or like what it could be used for i just used it for youtube i would go on like internet explorer and just search funny videos <laughs> i wouldn't even think to do that i would always go on like google images and just type up like sonic and just like scroll through like the, the like 20 pages of like results just looking at pictures and going like that one looks cool no, that would be it. I would, like, save pictures of my favorite characters that I'd see on DeviantArt or whatever, and I would just, like, have a folder. Just I didn't even know I could save stuff. Really? And I would be the I would be that kid who downloaded a bunch of viruses, you know? Oh. If I would go on, like, a Flash game website, and it was like, download our player to play all these cool games oh, on dude, your, on your desktop, I would download them all. And then the computer would get so, like, laggy and slow from all the viruses, and my dad would be like, it's unusable, I can't use this laptop anymore. So, like, I, I once almost scammed my mom where I was on um, MySpace, and MySpace used to have these little ads in the corner where it'd be, like, a kissy mark, and if your cursor went over it, it like, the kissy mark would track the cursor, and it'd be like, kiss the woman on her face and win a prize in under oh, 30 dude, seconds. You click on it. So you click on it, and it's like, you won, right? And it's like give us your credit card details and we'll get you the new PS4 or whatever. And I'm like, mom, look, I won. We just need your credit card details for shipping, <laughs> shipping costs. I was like, fuck no. She's like, pretty smart. Yeah. She like got a good look at it and was like, hell no. I'm not putting my credit card details on there. I got Minecraft as a kid and I thought it was the greatest thing ever on the PC on, on our shitty laptop where it ran at like seven frames a second. <laughs> and um, my, I went to my friend Brian's house uh, I did have a friend called Brian, and 
primary school. And I went to his house and he kept talking about how much he wanted to play Minecraft. So I went to his computer and I looked up Minecraft for free. And I clicked on one of the thousands of results that would come up for that. And it was that stock photo that like fan render where it's like Steve, but he's like putting his, sticking his arm out with the sword and he's hitting the creeper or the skeleton like down a cliff or something like that. And it was like Minecraft, play for free. <laughs> and then I, I, I went to download it on their computer, on their family computer. It was like, oh, just give your credit card details and you can download it. And I went to his mom and I was sitting there trying to convince his mom for like 30 minutes oh. why it wouldn't do anything bad. Why I just needed it, it to like confirm who they were so Minecraft would download. Oh. And uh, she didn't do it in the end. But she would keep doing that thing where like, okay, I'll, I'll do it later then. I'll do it later. Just like hoping my, my parents would come pick me up before. Or, like, or you would forget. Yeah, yeah or you I'd forget. forget. Yeah, then. yeah. But I was, con- I don't know why I was convinced that it would work, that it was actually free and that she would put it her credit card details. you were trying to manifest it yeah i i genuinely thought she would put her details into that <laughs> your friend hero brian <laughs> yeah true yeah what if we all cosplay as minecraft characters for halloween nope sunny's the wither now sunny's a magma cube sunny is enderman <laughs> no he's not kellen is uh steve uh veronica is um the chicken <laughs> yeah the chicken sammy's the pig now, Sammy's the Kai, Bean is the pig, and Lil, no, Lil Wench is the chicken. Lil Wench is a creeper. <laughs> He's not a creeper. Sonny's <laughs> a creeper. No, so, yes. Wench is a creeper, Okay, dude. Now, Kellen's a creeper, the green. <laughs> True. Kellen will be one of those kids in school. We're not doing would... Minecraft. That's fine. My other idea is, hey, Arnold. I wouldn't, I'd be fine with that, but I thought you said earlier you didn't want to do Donkey Kong because you'd be the only person really that interested. Yeah, but I feel like, hey, Arnold is more general than donkey kong I feel like donkey kong is more niche okay yeah. sure we'll but that. that's just an idea we don't do that that's just a theory it's a game theory i really don't care as long as it's not mario something fucking stupid i want it to be cool here and it's not that cool i would like it. it would make my heart happy but it's like it's, it's not i don't know i want to be creative with my costume being just hug up attacky is not creative enough i guess we'll think about it guys give yeah. us suggestions yeah in give the us comments suggestions below. we want to know what do you guys think we should be there's there's five of us Okay, it's There's me, me, Mark, Sunny, Sunny Kellen, Kellen and Jane, me. and Sunny. And Jean. Jean's part of it? Yeah, me, Mark, Sunny, Kellen, Jane. I didn't know Jane agreed. Jane was going to be purple guy. That's right, purple guy. Yeah. My mind's been so like fried the past couple weeks, I feel like. We've been nonstop We've this been whole l- last couple weeks working on this project. Yeah. And um, uh, it's been exhausting. Yeah, that's also why I don't want to record the podcast. That's also why I haven't uploaded in four months or four weeks. That's why we haven't like recorded the podcast. We had an opportunity to record last week with but William, we just, but we were so dead that we were like, no. We were just like, no. Yeah. Um. But Billy and, and uh, Savannah were gracious enough to fly out from Florida and help us uh, with with it. our project. But um, very very grateful for them. But ever since then, I've just been like, oh, no, no passion for anything. Like I keep sitting down to write videos, and I'm like. You know it what it is? Sucks. It's just because right now, since we've had friends in town, we wanna we wanna be in rest mode and vacation mode. Yeah, in my mind, it's like fuck uh, off. But yeah, we can't. it's like we worked all week, so now we can relax. And it's like no, we can't relax. No, we can't. We're just beginning. This is just the start of this it. This is just the start of it, guys. So and you won't know anything about it until mm, maybe next, maybe fall, two months, maybe one month or two, maybe in a couple months. Yeah, um, it'll all be worth it. I hope so. Yeah. Um, but you'll you'll find out yeah, more you'll about find that out. soon. But Real it's just soon. it's just like fucking completely drain me. That like I just don't want to do anything. I'm I just know. fucking fed up. It's like it's also because I just have so many like projects I'm working on at the minute, like doing the cartoon and this project and making like videos for two channels and the podcast. Is that whenever I go to work on one, in the back of my mind, I'm trying to think about the others. So that because I feel like if I'm not thinking about it You're in the back of my mind, I'm not enough. working on it, then yeah. it's like falling behind. So I'm like sitting down trying to do something and then I'll think of this other I, I'm so like just fucking like burnt eyed on what I'm working on that I, I think about the other thing that I have to work on and I'm like that seems way more fun. So I'll stop <laughs> this thing and I'll go work on that thing where I'll be like, This fucking sucks. I forgot why I stopped working on this one. I'm gonna go to, back to, to the project now, like um but uh hopefully in the next like two months everything will kind of level out. It definitely has been like a very large physical toll on us as well because it required a lot of, um, it required a lot of driving, a lot of driving, there a lot, yeah. a lot of driving, you know, like road trip <laughs> level driving. Yeah. Um, and a lot of moving shit. And so, um, 
it's it's taken like doing that. I'm just like fed up with it. Yeah, all and yeah. like I was telling Mark too earlier because I had gotten a new job recently, and like you know, it's like a, it's nine to five or whatever. Um, but it's so like I'm so exhausted after work that like I don't feel the drive to be creative, which is why I haven't been making a lot of art lately. Yeah, and it's like this kind of like creative bankruptcy. You know, and then and we and then we were like, okay, we need to now really, really focus on this project. So taking my thought away from like having to make art and focusing on this was like had definitely boosted my my confidence and creativity. Yeah, um, and motivation to get shit done. But it's like we're just exhausted. <laughs> yeah, and it's a thing where we're like, we've never done anything like this before. So it's all just like all new territory. And yeah. It's all like, what can we feasibly get done? What should we like have help with? Like, what's <laughs> the right way to do this? Realizing our ambitions can be a lot bigger than what we're capable we're of. We're capable of. Um, that was a hard hit. Yeah. It's one of those things where I have no idea how anything is going to like end up two months from now. So it's all just like. This well, sucks, you know. I gotta wait two months to figure out how this if this thing's gonna be good or not. I think I think it'll be good because we'll make it good. Oh yeah, I wouldn't let it come out if it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, there's no way we wouldn't make it be to our liking and release it. Yeah, um, but at the same time, we can't be per perfectionists about it. Yeah, and at the same time, you guys have no idea what we're talking about. So yeah, this probably isn't <laughs> that interesting. Yeah, it probably isn't it very um, interesting to you. Although maybe who knows? Maybe it is interesting. I want to make a video. Um, I was thinking about this earlier today. Um. Because I, I thought about making this video many times in the past couple of years. And I feel like now is the time where I could I finally want to do it. But then at the, the same time, I'm like, oh, do I really need another thing? Do I really need to do another thing? Well, right tell now? me. Um, everyone recently got really mad at me um, out of nowhere over over new Spongebob. Oh. Because <laughs> uh, I made a short. I made a short where I literally just said that it looks different now. I didn't really give many of my opinions. And I said... I understand the criticism that sometimes the jokes and I are more about the faces the character makes instead of what they're actually saying. That's like the extent I'm pretty sure of where my opinions in that short led. People got really mad. It sparked this whole big thing where like storyboard artists who work on the show are tweeting about it and all these fans are tweeting about it. And then I talk about it and then people get mad that I, I'm talking about it again. But the thing is that people like really want to defend new Spongebob so much that they're like... They try to convince you that the show has not changed. And it's like, good or bad, the show the has show changed. The show has changed. It's been running for 25 years. I'd imagine a show like that would change at one point. People are like, no, it's written the exact same way. It's like, no, fundamentally, it's just not written the exact but it's same not, way. But it's not board-driven anymore, is Th it? That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's a script-driven now, I'm pretty yeah. sure. So just on the most basic level of writing, it is not the same. So don't convince me it is. But I wanted to work on a video finally because it's a thing where I've only really made like two SpongeBob videos ever. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, our, our like SpongeBob ranking was, was one. it three, maybe no, it was four. I worked on the, the very short review of sponge on the run. The third movie I did the one on camp coral and, uh, Patrick show, uh, which is what sparked all this. I'm pretty sure. Um, the next one was on the ranking video and then this would be the fourth. Yeah. It's a thing where it, uh, if I'm making a short, I'm restricted to talking about it for only a minute. Or if I'm working on a ranking video, it's like I don't want to focus on one episode for too long. Mm -hmm. So I got to move on and keep like a, a brisk pace. Um, so I was like, could I do I just sit down and make like an hour long video where I just talk about SpongeBob's like animation style as a whole? And I don't really go much in depth. In, it's not like a video where it's like, this is my opinion and here's my points. It's all just like genuinely just objectively talking about it and being like this is how it was animated before like this is sure. the way it like works why not this Ask is the way Jay it is Leonard not. to join on <laughs> I, I i i have a couple like people i i know of who work on the show that i could ask i don't know why people people will get mad people will get mad at the idea of me making it but i would want it to be a thing where okay, they would but also engagement that's the, yeah the, yeah that it is all any <laughs> publicity is good publicity but it's it would be a thing where i would want it to come off like Average SpongeBob fan, Reddit user, like, like active on Twitter, sees the thumbnail and they get really mad. You know, they're like, "Oh, you're making a, a whole video about this thing, an hour-long video," and then they click on it, and then by the end, maybe they're like, "Oh, I get it. I get what he's saying now." You know, where it's a thing where, <laughs> oh, we can only dream. But that's my that's my plight. Is <laughs> we that can I, only dream. I, I always feel like every everything's on like the tip of my tongue of like how I can perfectly articulate what I mean, and that's no why, one ever gets it. That's why you have to be like me. 
and say whatever the fuck you want and people get mad at you anyways. It's like a perpetual dream where um, you keep like something's attacking you and you keep screaming. But you can't. But you can't. But nothing comes yeah. out. That's what it feels. That, that's what being a YouTuber perpetually uh, <laughs> is for me. <laughs> it's feeling like I, I, I can never like explain myself properly. Or I can never articulate my there thoughts. There will never be. You will never be surrounded by people who will always agree with you. No, of course. No, life, definitely. You know? No. And so it's like, why try and find that through but something get, as big as the internet? In my mind, it would be like less for like the approval and more for the sense of like being understood. Nobody can ever say I did not thoroughly articulate what I think of like this. You know, you know what it is, is why do we have to thoroughly articulate every single little thing that we say on the internet? Why does everything have to have so much context? Yeah. What yeah. happened to the good old days of Twitter where you could just fucking tweet what was on your mind and no one gave a shit? That, yeah, yeah. that's the thing you is know? that there is a sense of like, well, it's just what they, what they thought. You know, it's what they're saying. But a video is different where it's like, no, you had to sit down, you had to write this, you had to edit this, you know, you... Yeah. The, especially for my channel, it's always like, okay, there's a, there has to be like a point to this video. Um, so I would hope that it would just be like... A video that wasn't much... There Nobody wasn't could, a big point to it, opinion-wise. It was just, just, here is objectively what the animation style of Spongebob was like. But also years. just in a way to where someone couldn't ever, ever try to be like, well, he's just mad for no reason, you know? Or he's just getting angry because it's, like, new. And then it's like, no, you're dumb. Here's an hour of me talking in-depth about it. Because I feel like I could. There's a lot to talk about. We talk about Spongebob talk about animation a lot. A lot. Um I, but then I'm like, oh, do I really need to do another thing? But then I'm like, oh, I want to. It, it seems like a fun... My like I idea guess... of like a fun hobby brick is working on a different thing. So think of it this way then. Make a list of all the things that you I like. Did... Oh. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my idea for a video. Let yeah. me know if you guys would want to see that. Because I think I could talk for a while about that. And it's... It's just a thing where I feel like I've never been able to, like, properly have the time to articulate my thoughts. And it works so... Because there are so many people out there who look at new Spongebob and are just like, it's bad. You know, just because it's not like the old one. That it's easy to lump any criticism of the show in with that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, which isn't easy or not that they've, like, did their whole episode uh, where they make fun the of the nostalgic, nostalgic critic. critic. Yeah. Um, so I feel like because of stuff like that, it's so easy that if you bring up a criticism now... You're automatically lumped into those that group of people. See, but then, <laughs> can I just point out that SpongeBob having an episode where they make fun of the nostalgia critic is so far removed from what SpongeBob originally was? Can yeah, we can we point then, that out? But then, but then the criticism for that is like, well, it's not SpongeBob; it's the Patrick Show. And then in my mind, it's like, why does the fuck does the Patrick Show look exactly <laughs> the same to the SpongeBob Show with the same characters? But whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you criticize something. I feel like it's easy for people to lump it into like black and white groups of like, okay, you hate it or you love it. Yeah. When for me, modern SpongeBob is a thing where it's like, I don't care, you know? I like, I mean, I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, I like SpongeBob. I, yeah, yeah, it's that thing where it's like, these don't make me angry. I don't think this is like shit or anything. It's just not for me, yeah. you know? But you can express why it it's not for you without people being like, well, you hate it, you know? But that's also a thing where new SpongeBob wasn't made for us. It wasn't, yeah. It's made for little babies. It's made for but, iPad kids. But then I'm like, well, why the fuck are like 25 year old people on the internet <laughs> getting also, mad at me for being mad at SpongeBob? Because they're also iPad kids, <laughs> just like the proud family There's people. No just There's like no the winning. Just like the Disney adults, all of them. They're all iPad kids. So I don't know. I, I, I that was just a thought. I literally thought of that idea this morning because I. I think it's in a, a great while. idea. Uh, and maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll write it, guys, and the video will never come out because I didn't work out well. But like the Garfield one. But this will be the only what Garfield one. Like the one, the video you did for Garfield, where you've had that in the back burner for like years. Yeah, you yeah. I did it. Yeah. Um, who knows? Who knows? Either way, all I know is, thanks Bye -bye for watching, booty. guys. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in for the next video where we are going to maybe do something other than a podcast. Guys, for once. we are going to try to draw the perfect Timmy Turner next episode. Yeah, not an episode of the podcast, just an episode of the channel of meeting halfway yeah so get ready yeah get ready guys thanks for watching thanks for watching